Shabbat Shalom, everybody. That's right. Not only is tonight beginning the new moon for the month of Adar, it also falls on Shabbat. Imagine the new moon and the first of Adar falling on a Shabbat. I can't help but think of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, where God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And then he says this, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. The new moon, which is the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal day on the biblical calendar. Why is that? Because without the new moon, we couldn't know when any of the biblical holidays would fall. It is known as Rosh Chodesh, or the sanctifying of the new moon. This notifies us which days during that month will be holy and which are not. We know the Bible begins with the tree of life. We see that in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9, where it says that God made to grow out of the ground every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But here's the thing about that tree of life we find in the very beginning in Genesis. We find it shows up at the end of the book in Revelation. Listen to chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. God showed John, it says, a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb right in the middle of the street. On one side of the river and on the other was the tree of life bearing, listen to this, 12 kinds of fruits, yielding its fruit every month. Can you imagine a fruit tree that produces a different fruit every month and 12 different kinds of fruit? I bet there's going to be some fruits we haven't tasted yet. Well, guess what? Here we see when it says every month, the months won't be based on January, February, March, every new moon. So we see during the millennial reign, every new moon will be honored even by the tree of life as it knows that is when it is to produce a new fruit. Listen to this during the millennial reign. It says, in Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1, it says, Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut for six working days. But on the Sabbath day, it will be open. And on the day of the new moon, it will be open. Can you imagine the new moon is going to be honored every month for 1,000 years during the millennial reign? Well, how about when the millennial reign is over? We have a new heaven and a new earth and a new sun and a new moon. Listen to this. This is from Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. It says, God is declaring, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord. He says to Israel, to King David in particular, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it will happen, it says, this is for eternity now, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. Can you imagine for eternity we're going to be keeping the new moon as well? Now, listen to this. This is from Psalms 104, verse 19 through 21. Just like it says in Genesis, here in Psalms, God says, or David is speaking, and he says, God made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's going down. You made darkness, and it is night. 
wherein all the beasts of the forest creep around. The young lions are roaring after their prey, and they seek their food from God. Wow, God made the moon to mark. The word seasons there is really the appointed times. As a matter of fact, on Psalm 81, verse 3 and 4, it says we're to blow the shofar at the new moon. And at the full moon for our feast day. That's referring to the feast of Passover, unleavened bread, and the feast of tabernacles. It says it's a statute for Israel and ordinance of the God of Jacob. So here we are. I'm going to attempt to blow the shofar. This is one of the special shofars. Uh, It is called a Jacob sheep shofar. If you remember uh, when uh, Jacob uh, was, you know, arguing with Laban over whose sheep were who, and there were these spotted sheep. That's what this sheep horn comes from, one of those. I don't know if you can see the little sticker there. Hey, we did it. We blow the shofar on the new boot. Listen to Psalms 89, and this is verse 20. God says, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand have established, my arm will also strengthen him. And then listen to this in verse 23 and 24. God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him. I'm going to smite them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. Now listen to verse 28 and 29. God says, forever I will keep for him my mercy and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. And then it goes on in verse 33 through 37. God says, nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that's gone forth from my lips. Once I have sworn to David by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed will endure forever. His throne as the sun before me, it will be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Do you know every time when you look up in the sky at night and you see the moon, that is to remind you that God's promises to David will never fail, or be set aside. As a matter of fact, in Exodus 12, verse 2, it says, this month is to be the beginning of your months. It's to be the first month of the year to you. And so Nisan was to be the very first month. This is when Passover is. And you go an entire year to the month of Adar that we're beginning tonight. That is the 12th month of the year. And what they would do, they would light fires on the hilltops that would be going all through Israel and then into Babylon and Egypt and everywhere. So everyone would know it is the time to keep the new moon. Now, my question is this. Do we make ourselves holy or does God make us holy? Well, guess what? We're to keep ourselves holy after God has made us holy. Listen to Leviticus. This is chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. It says, Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God, the, uh, and you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So God is the one who makes you holy to him. And then we have to maintain that holiness. Listen to Leviticus 20, verse 26. You will be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from all people that you should be mine. Wow, God chose you. Now you need to keep yourself set apart now that he's picked you out of the crowd. Don't go running back to the crowd. Listen to Leviticus 18, 30. 
It says, therefore, you shall keep my charge that you do not any of these abominable customs which were done before you, that you do not defile yourselves, for I am the Lord your God. So it's important that we maintain our holiness, and the way we maintain our holiness is by keeping ourselves separate from the world, not jumping headlong back into it. So let's stand together and let's sanctify the new moon together. This is the prayer for the sanctification of the new moon. Together, may it be thy will, Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen and amen. Selah. Think about that. What a prayer. I'm so glad. This is a, such a phenomenal prayer to pray every month. Let's continue with our prayers. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's host with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles, and they never miss their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, O Lord, who renews the moons. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Amen and amen. You can be seated, and I'm going to do a quick teaching on the month of Adar. I want to start here. With the month of Adar, you see this little star of David. It's a bunch of hamatashin, as I will tell you a little bit more about Purim. Those are one of the things that you want to make on Purim, uh, celebrating what happened in the book of Esther, which we will get to shortly. But right now, I want to tell you which tribe is over the month of Adar. It is the tribe of Naphtali. That is right. Do you know Naphtali, one of Jacob's sons, he was considered Jacob's trusted messenger. Listen to Genesis 49, 21. When Jacob was blessing his, his sons, he said concerning Naphtali, Naphtali is a deer let loose. He gives words of elegance. Well, guess what? Back then, they didn't have the Pony Express. They had the Deer Express. Notes were tied to the horns of deer, and they would be let loose. So they would run back to their natural habitat, and their friends would find the note and read it. They were thought of as the ones who would bring the good news. In Isaiah 52, verse 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings the good news that publishes peace, that brings the good news of good, that publishes salvation or Yeshua, that says to Zion, your God reigns. What's fascinating is the land that was allotted to the tribe of Naphtali was usually the very first area that would produce fruit from the trees. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, this is when Moses was blessing Naphtali and chapter 33 and verse 23 of Naphtali, he said, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full of the blessing of the Lord, 
possess the West and the South. The word Naphtali means to twist or to wrestle. And Leah was wrestling with God over having another child. Well, what's fascinating, Naphtali, which means to twist or wrestle, the very word prayer is tefillah. And the prayer boxes are called tefillin, the very same letters that make up the name Naphtali as he wrestles with God in prayer. Psalms 42, verse 1 and 2. It says, as the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants after you, God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When am I going to come and appear before God? In Judges, let me give you another attribute of Naphtali. In chapter 5, verse 18, it speaks about Zebulun, who was a people that jeopardized their lives to the deaths, along with Naphtali. On the high places of the field, Naphtali was courageous, full of courage. Now, one of the things that happens in the month of Adar, as a matter of fact, we're going to be going over the Torah portion called Teruma, which is basically your offering that you've lifted up and set aside that takes place in the first Torah portion is the month of, in the month of Adar is Teruma. Listen to Exodus chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. That word offering there is Teruma, and it derives from two separate root words that mean to both to be separate separate from and then to elevate it so the, it's an offering is something you you take from what you have you take it out you sanctify it and then you elevate it to God and it becomes holy as you lift it up to God that which you have made holy now in Ezekiel listen to this in chapter 32 verse 1 and 2 it says it came to pass in the 12th year, in the 12th month, on the first day of the month, that's today. Right now, this verse is talking about what happened today. It's the first day of the 12th month. And the word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel. As a matter of fact, you're going to find the word of the Lord almost always came to the prophets on the new moon. God said to Ezekiel, son of man, Take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, you're like a young lion of the nations, and you are a whale in the seas, and you come forth with your rivers and trouble your waters with your feet, and you foul their rivers. Isn't this interesting? In Ezekiel 32, God is judging the nation of Egypt on Adar 1, and I'm going to end here with what else he has to say about Egypt. I just wanted to kick it off because that happened today. Well, guess what? Here, the first of Adar falls this Saturday, February 13th, and it is also known as Shabbat Shekelim because they were to give the shekel as a temple tax to help maintain the temple. Listen to Ezra chapter 6. This is verse 14 and 15, talking about when the Jews were rebuilding the temple that had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And it says they built and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Iddo. And they built and they finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. And according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius. Wow, the temple was dedicated on the third of Adar. That's this Monday, February 15th is the very day the temple that had been destroyed was rededicated. And so it's why in Adar, they collect the temple tax in order to help maintain the temple. Let's fast forward now to the time of Yeshua. Listen to Matthew 17. This is verse 24 through 27. 
It says, when they came to Capernaum, those that received the half shekel came to Peter and said, does not your teacher pay the half shekel? This whole verse is concerning the temple tax. So if you understand your Jewish roots, you realize in the Gospels, this takes place in the month of Adar. This happened in this month. And he says, yes, we pay it. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? The kings of the earth, from whom do they receive toll or tribute? From their sons or from strangers? And when he said from strangers, Jesus said to him, therefore the sons are free. But so we don't cause them to stumble, go out to the Galilee, cast a hook and take up the first fish that you catch. And when you open its mouth, you're going to find a shekel. Take it and give it to them for me and you. One full shekel is two half shekels. And so this event happened this month. Now, here's something else. I don't know if you are aware. Moses' birthday is on the 7th of Adar. That's February 19th this year. Not only is February 19th, the 7th of Adar, the very day Moses was born, it's also the very day he passed away as well. And then, of course, we have Purim. Listen to Esther 3, verse 13. It talks about how these letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces. And these were horrible letters that were sent. And it said this. It says that you are to destroy, to kill, cause to perish all Jews, young and old, even the little children and women in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, and then take the spoil of them for the prey. Oh, my goodness. And then listen to Esther 9, verse 20 through 22. It goes on and it says how after the victory came that Mordecai wrote things, and he sent letters now to all the Jews that were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, to establish among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar and the 15th day of the same every year. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned from them, turned to them from sorrow to joy and from mourning to a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy and sending portions one to another and giving gifts to the poor. And so know that Adar 14 and 15 this month is Friday, February 26th and 27th. That's the month of Perm, and I'm sure we'll be playing a video here at El Shaddai as we read the entire book of Esther for you. Be sure and watch. Now, I'm going to go back to Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 17 and 18. When you remember earlier, it was on this very day, the first of the month of Adar, that God is speaking judgment to the nation of Egypt. Now listen to this in verse 17 and 18. It came to pass also in the 12th year on the 15th day of the month. That's the 15th day of the 12th month we were just in. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt. Cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations unto the nether parts of the earth with those that go down to the pit. This is when... The very day that the Jews were rejoicing from the victory when the nations wanted them dead, that God will judge the nations. Now I'm going to close with this verse from 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 27 and 28. Listen to this. It says, it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, so he had been in captivity for 37 years. This is when Nebuchadnezzar came and deposed him and put Zedekiah as king instead. And he hauled King Jehoiakim off with his mother and about 10,000 other uh, Jews into Babylon. And it says after being in captivity 37 years, guess what? King Jehoiakim in the 12th month, the month of Adar, on the 27th day of the month, that the new king, after Nebuchadnezzar died, his son, evil Merodach, is made king of Babylon. 
And it says, in that year, he began to reign. He lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. Well, that takes place Thursday, March 11th. Yes, that's the 27th of Adar. And I think what's so interesting, as we look at the month of Adar, which also means to lift up, we see Yehoiakim is lifted up, Taruma. This is amazing. Thank you for joining us. We will see you not only next Shabbat, but at the next new moon. Let's close now with the priestly blessing. Ivarekaka Adonai Vaish Mareka Ya'er Adonai Panav Ilaka Bihuneka Yisa Adonai Panav Ilaka Vyasem Laka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That great shalom that only he can give in that most wonderful name. Eyeh Asher Eyeh. Be blessed.